and today we're going to be reviewing the rigid r8723 18 volt brushless subcompact impact driver so let's go ahead and get started okay first up we have the battery slot the battery slot on this particular tool is located at the base of the tool and will accept any of the rigid's 18 volt batteries this particular battery slot is fairly well designed but there is a little bit of play or looseness that i wish they had eliminated and made the tolerances a little bit tighter it isn't so much that you need to worry about the battery falling out or it losing power while in operations, but if you do end up dropping the tool, there is a higher chance that the battery could come loose because of that extra play. But with that being said, I haven't had any issues with this particular tool in operation, and so it still gets a pass. You can adapt batteries over from other brands via third-party adapter. Just remember, you do that at your own risk. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, next up we have the belt clip mounting points. There's a belt clip mounting point on either the left side or right side, and this will allow you to, well, put the belt clip where you want, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. There really isn't much else to say other than the fact that, well, it's a nice feature to have, and I'm glad they included it. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the LED light, and unfortunately this is where it gets its first black mark. Now, the illumination of the LED light isn't horrible, but I personally would have preferred it to be a little bit brighter. My main complaint here is the fact that it's basically shining straight up, which means you're illuminating the underside of the impact driver and basically the ceiling and not whatever you're working on. If they want to improve the design here, have it aimed a little bit further forward so you can see what you're working on. I would have thought that would have been a fairly simple thing to accomplish, but apparently not. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the grip. Now the grip on this particular tool is actually fairly nice for people who have normal or small sized hands. If you have extra large hands, it might be a little bit small for you, but it might still work as well. It really depends on your own personal tastes. The grip on this particular tool is angled and has a nice rubberized texture, which is actually a little bit nicer than what you'll typically find on Ryobi tools. The pattern that they went with is also very effective, and I have to say I don't really have any complaints about the grip or ergonomics on this particular tool so as far as i'm concerned everything here passes with flying colors moving on okay next up we have the trigger the trigger is made out of black smooth plastic without any rubberized texture or grooves molded into it which is fairly basic but common now when it comes to the overall operation of the trigger i really don't have any complaints the trigger pulls very smoothly and there is next to no uh side to side movement that would interrupt your pull I will say that the definition in between the different speeds is also quite good. There is plenty of room in between the medium speeds, low speeds, and high speeds, and if you are trying to be delicate, you can achieve that fairly easily on this particular impact driver at the slower speeds, which is going to be important since there is no dedicated speed control button. So at the end of the day, the trigger on this particular tool gets a pass from me, and I have zero complaints. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the safety, and the safety is pretty much standard on this particular tool. It's easy to access with your fingers, and it will prevent the trigger from being depressed when it is in the center position. However, if the trigger is in the safety position, you will still be able to activate the LED light, so if you are hauling this tool around in a bag of tools and you leave it somewhere, say over the weekend, with the trigger being pressed on hard enough, it could drain your battery if you left the battery in because the LED light could still possibly turn on. Everything else is fairly standard. All the way to the left is your driving, all the way to the right is going to be your reverse, and well, quite frankly, that's about the size of it. No real complaints here. Everything is standard, and so it gets a pass from me. Moving on. And next up, we have the bit holder, the chuck, the collar, whatever you want to call it. I like calling it a chuck because that's what makes the most sense to me, and that's pretty much what I've always called it. So if you disagree, sorry, that's what I'm calling it. Okay, so this is an auto-loading chuck, which means that it is supposed to stay open when you eject the bit, and it's also supposed to eject the bit. So you can easily insert another bit when you need to change your bits out. However, this feature doesn't always work or is not the most reliable. I've had multiple occasions where I've ejected the bit and it didn't stay open, or it didn't eject the bit completely, and I still had to use two hands in order to change the uh, bit out. So at the end of the day, this is a nice feature when it works properly, but on this particular impact driver, it's not always the most reliable. It could just be my particular model, but it is something that you need to be aware of if you are buying this particular tool for this feature. So yeah, it does need some improvements or maybe I just have a defective model. Either way, it's not the best experience. Moving on. Okay, without a battery, it weighs with 789 grams, which is about 1.7 pounds. 
And with a two amp hour battery, it weighs 1,207 grams, which is about 2.7 pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this particular tool in use. And I have to say, I really do enjoy using this particular tool. Now, I've been primarily using this particular tool for, well, driving in screws into pre-drilled holes and reassembling and disassembling my Whirlpool refrigerator, which is an absolute piece of crap and has made me a lifelong enemy of the company of Whirlpool. I hate Whirlpool. But this particular impact driver has been very helpful for me reassembling and disassembling parts on that particular refrigerator to get it to work again. Now, overall, this particular impact driver is going to be more at home in a shop scenario or situation than, say, a construction site scenario. If you pre-drill your holes, you will be able to install small lag bolts or drive in wood screws into decking or that sort of thing. But it definitely is not going to be the best option in those scenarios because of the small head. The small head will allow you to get into a lot of different tight spaces easier. And so if you need to get around the corner in a cabinet or something and a regular size impact driver isn't able to fit, this will probably be able to get you in there. But then again, there are some things that are going against it as well. There is no dedicated speed control button on this particular impact driver, which means you're going to have to re completely rely on that trigger. Now the trigger is very good, but it still would have been nice to have a dedicated speed control button. Another thing that is sort of going against it is, well, tight spaces are usually dark and the light on this particular tool is pretty worthless, as I mentioned earlier. So there's another little bit of a strike against it. Not a big one, but it is a strike. And probably the biggest issue I actually have with this impact driver would be the battery pack. The battery pack is ginormous. There's no other way of putting it. It's really hard to get into super tight compact spaces or areas that are about arm length, say an engine compartment, because of how large the battery pack is. I really think that if you are needing to get, uh, let's say, elbow deep in a compartment, say in an engine block or something, you really need to consider maybe the M12 system over this particular tool because of its more compact size. But if you do need the increased power, it is a difficult decision to make because on one hand you have 18 volts and more power, and on the other hand you have 12 volts and a much more compact system. So at the end of the day, it really is gonna be up to your own needs on whether or not this tool will work for you. But for me personally, I do enjoy using this particular tool and there really is nothing majorly wrong with it. Just a couple of minor things that I would change or add. But with that being said, there are other impact drivers that are far worse than this that are around the same size. So I think this is a, a pretty good option to consider. Like I said earlier, I have also have the Ryobi compact impact driver and it definitely has a less powerful motor in it. So this particular impact driver is a step up from, well, Ryobi's offering in the uh, field of compact impact drivers. So yeah, it's definitely a good option to consider when you need to get into tight spaces and you need a lot of power and your regular impact driver just won't fit. But with that being said, let's go ahead and recap with the pros and cons. Okay, first up, 18 volt. 18 volt is definitely gonna be a far superior voltage to 12 volt. Not to mention, well, you can adapt batteries over from other brands via third-party adapter if you so choose to. Just remember, you do that at your own risk. Trigger. Overall, the trigger on this particular tool is very effective, and they did a great job in making sure you have plenty of definition in between the high, low, and medium speed. So this is a pro in my opinion. Quick release chuck. Overall, the quick release chuck is very handy in a lot of different situations. I'm pretty sure the one on mine is slightly defective, so just make sure yours isn't and you will be set. Smallish. This is pretty much one of the, if not the smallest, compact impact drivers on the market, which means it will be very useful in a variety of situations. Grip. The grip on this particular tool is very comfortable, and when you combine it with the lightweight nature of this tool, it means that you can use the tool for long periods of time, which I would consider to be a pro. Belt clip. The fact that they have mounting points for a belt clip on either side of the tool is a nice little feature that one cannot take for granted in today's world. And the first meh would be power. Don't get me wrong, for a subcompact impact driver, this has more power than a lot of different offerings on the market. But when you do compare this against a regular impact driver, it still gets left in the dust. Moving on. No power settings. Unfortunately, there are no gear or power settings on this particular impact driver, so you are only left with the variable speed trigger, which is very good, but it still would have been nice to have those, well, dedicated gear settings. No bit holder. Bit holders are a necessity on tools, as far as I'm concerned. I know there's people out there that don't like them, but I do. So as far as I'm concerned, since this doesn't have one, that's a con. And last but not least, 
LED light. The LED light really needs to be angled forward a couple of degrees and it would be just fine. But since it isn't, it is on the con list. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular tool. This particular tool is definitely a tool I enjoy using. However, there are some things that you need to consider before buying it. If your goal is general construction, you're going to be better off with an impact driver with a larger motor. If your goal is to reach into tight spaces at arm's length and your openings are very small, you're probably going to be better off with, say, I don't know, an M12 from Milwaukee. But if you need more power, this is a great option as long as the spaces aren't too small. So as long as you consider all your options and needs, this particular impact driver comes recommended. And that is it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. God bless.